So today we are going to discuss about uh, experimental methods in uh, media and communication. And that is one very, very important method that uh, very often we do not uh, give the importance that it deserves. And it's probably because of the logistics that are involved there and probably the uh, rigor uh, that's required here, which, which uh, becomes uh, difficult to maintain at times. So uh, the moment I talk of experiments, this is the figure that comes into our mind. And this is what we see in television. This is what we see in movies. This is what uh, is generally regarded as experiment. Or this is the stereotype image of an experiment. Uh, uh, much of it could be true. But in social sciences, experiment also have uh, many other uh, uh, perspectives. So we'll talk about what are those perspectives and how we can do that and what are the things that we have to be careful about. And I will uh, probably give you one or two examples about uh, good research in uh, or good research which has adopted this experimental technique so it's not only about uh, these things uh, experimental research in social science has a lot more other aspects to it so we'll talk about that so as i said experimental designs are, are regarded as the most rigorous because uh, that's the standard against which all other designs can be judged and one reason is that because if i have to establish cause effect relations that this causes that or uh, the example that I gave you earlier, that if uh, good uh, time spent on online classes causes greater understanding. So if I have to establish this cause-effect relation, then I have to go for an experimental design. Then a mere correlation tests would not be enough. That is why this is regarded as such an important uh, test. So if I have to give you a uh, definition of uh, uh, what is what is an experiment, so this is how we... Uh, uh, described especially in social sciences. So it's a methodological design which shows how one or more variables that have been manipulated by a researcher, how it influences another variable. So in other words, how an independent variable causes some change in the dependent variable. So I'm manipulating the independent variable and I'm, I'm trying to find out what are the uh, what is the effect on the dependent variables. And uh, the important effect or the most important uh, purpose of an experiment is to identify causal relationships between the variables, as I said, that this is caused by that or this causes that. So this can be established only through experimental methods or through the experimental design. Uh, so this is a classic definition of, of an experiment. It, it means a recording of observations. It could be quantitative or qualitative made by defined and recorded operations. So we have to, first of all, define what are those operations or what are those manipulations. And we have to record those. And in defined conditions, and they, these are very, very important factors. I will discuss about these conditions uh, in today's presentation, followed by an examination of the data by appropriate statistical and mathematical rules for existence, or we're trying to find out whether there are significant relationships or not. So this is just, as I said, just a literal definition of that, that we are trying to find out record data when that uh, dependent variable has been uh, influenced or impacted by some independent variable. And we examine that data and we try and find out through statistical means whether there is some relationship between these two variables. So basically, that is what we do in uh, an experiment. So I'm going to talk about what is a classical experiment design. So in a classical experimental design, we first of all need to know or we have to under, uh, have an understanding about what is an independent variable or a condition or treatment introduced into the experiment. So it could be uh, in, in today's time, it could be the vaccine, you know, kind of a thing. So that is the independent variable. So, so you introduce that. So that's, of course, not for social science research. But in social science research, it could be that I make some uh, some person consume some kind of a content or I, I uh, expose that person to some kind of a content. And then I uh, uh, will try and see what is the impact of that condition on the dependent variable. So in the classical uh, experimental design, first of all, we must know what is an independent variable or we must have a very clear defined understanding of what is the independent variable. Now, dependent variable is something that provides us with the data. It could be physical conditions, it could be social behaviors, it could be attitudes, it could be feelings or belief of the subject. So whether after consuming, say, for example, violent content, did your attitude change? Or after consuming uh, a lot of content, which was which were about patriotic movies, say, for example, did your attitude or feelings or beliefs, etc., did they change? 
so as you can understand the first part is about introducing you to those conditions and the second part is to measure these things and in an earlier uh, uh, presentation we have spoken about how to measure that it could be through likert scales it could be through standardized instruments or whatever but we are measuring this data through certain subjects it could also be self reported that we ask you that uh, okay what do you think about this or what 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 is what uh, or how would you behave about this so on and so forth so the dependent variables are measured in exactly the same way or in very much the same way as it would be in a survey research so we introduce that condition means i introduce that independent variable it is it is regarded as a, one of the condition or a treatment and if i have to compare it with clinical test it is it could be some medicine or it could be some vaccine or whatever and then we find out and we study the response to that treatment so we are using the same term but it means very different in our media and communication perspective it could be introduction to uh, say for example public speaking classes we'll talk about that as well so uh, dependent variables are often uh, tested through the survey instrument or there can be some automatic way of testing that as well in in certain more sophisticated experimental research designs so for example there is this uh, secondary task reaction time so how much time do people uh, take to re uh, respond to a question or how much time they take to respond to the click of a button or whatever so we can have very many different ways of uh, uh measuring the dependent variable the important thing to understand is that this is what uh, this is the at the center of what we're trying to study the dependent variables then there are two important things that we do not uh, measure the dependent variable straight away there are two cases first i measure the dependent variable prior to the introduction of the independent variable so the independent variable could be uh, some television content or could be some ott content for example so i measure certain attitude certain behavior certain knowledge before i show this content to the uh, uh, subject and before uh, showing that i do the pre test and it would it would ask the same kind of of, of questions so uh, probably it could be say for example if i were having a training program so i would give you a pre test so what is your idea about experiment or what do you know about experiments so on and so forth and after this uh, presentation i give you the same test and try to see whether there has been some kind of a difference after you were exposed to this test but that's a very crude example because that would be just a one shot test i'll i'll talk about all these in details in a moment's time uh after the pre test the post test is also be has to be done so that would uh, give us an idea about uh how much the dependent variable has changed because of the treatment or because of the condition that was provided so in in our case i will repeat i was talking about the condition could be exposure to ott content or it could be exposure to uh, some violent content or patriotic content or any any other kind of exposure or treatment as i said so we have to have the post test as well just pre test is probably not enough we also have to have two different groups first of all is the experimental group that receives the independent variable or that receives the treatment or that receives the condition and then we have the control group because a uh, uh, control group is the one which does not receive the independent variable it is the one which does not uh, receive the vaccine say for example so we 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 are having one which is known as the control group and the other which is the experimental group in the experimental group if i have to give you that uh, kind of a clinical uh, 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 you know example then it would be you know the experimental group has been given that medicine the control group has not been given medicine they they probably uh, could have been given a placebo so because if you know that you have not been given medicine then your response would be different you do not know that whether you have been given the medicine or not so very important to understand that in a true experimental design you have to have both the experimental group and the control group i will explain why control group is required so uh, finally the, uh, uh, we have to make the uh, as i said in the beginning we have to manipulate the independent variable uh, before a change happens in the dependent variable so the changes in the dependent and the dependent variable they must be correlated so we have uh, had a presentation on correlation means uh, either one is causing an increase in the other or decrease in the other but they must they must happen together now why are we having uh, a, a, an experimental group and a control group because we have to be extremely uh, sure about one thing and it's that 
that any change in the dependent variable, any change in your attitude or behavior or habit or whatever should be explainable only by the independent variable and not by any other intervening variable. That is why we have two very similar groups so that we can uh, uh, find out whether uh, it, uh, the change that is observed is due to the treatment or is due to some other factor. So since we have two very similar groups, we give them uh, to one group, we give the treatment to the other group, we uh, do not give the treatment. So that tells us whether the treatment uh, and, and as, as I said, the treatment can be of many types. So that treatment, whether that has some effect or not. So this is a very important part of uh, experimental design. And that is why we need to have the control group, the experimental group, the post, uh, the pretest and the post test. So we must have a knowledge of all these things. And when we have all these things, then it is a classical experimental design. Very often we'll see that it, it, it may not happen or it's not possible to have these classical designs. So we'll uh, have uh, another explanation or another way of uh, going around that. So uh, before we start an experimental design, these are the questions that we must ask, ask, ask ourselves or these are the questions that need to be answered. So what are the variables under investigation? So which are the variables that we are uh, trying to find out about? So what are the dependent variables and what are the independent variables? What data are being collected and analyzed? So whether if, if it, it, it could be your uh, uh, attitude. So if, if I'm... Uh, Collecting data about your attitude, I must be very clear about what, uh, how it is being collected and how it is being analyzed. Where is the source of your data? So whether uh, uh, if, I'm, if I'm measuring the attitude, am I measuring it through a questionnaire that I'm giving you or am I measuring it through some other uh, uh, manner? How is the experiment being conducted? And we'll tell you and we'll show you that uh, our idea of the laboratory or our idea of the experiment has to be a lot more creative because we are dealing with very, very, very different things. Uh, very different from the stereotype uh, image that I showed you right at the beginning. And finally, how will the experimental data be analyzed? So there are uh, very many statistical techniques to analyze this data. We'll talk about the analysis also as we go along. So uh, first of all, we have to uh, state the research problem and the hypothesis or the research questions, because that's very important. If our hypothesis or research questions are not clear, then we will not be able to uh, convince ourselves and to convince every, everybody that the experimental methods are the most appropriate ones. So we have to be very clear about this decision that the experimental methods are appropriate for this kind of a research. And then we have to, as I said, uh, in, in a classical uh, experimental model, we have to define what are the independent variables, what are the dependent variables, what are the potential intervening variables, and we have to take care that it does not impact our experiment. And then we have to choose the appropriate measures uh, to find out the data. So as I said, first part is manipulating the independent variable. The second part is to get data. So we must have appropriate measures to use in the experiment. So uh, as I said, uh, you need to have an experimental control and why control group is required. I just uh, gave you uh, the reason, the reason being that if I have two similar groups, then I can be sure that whatever changes are being observed in the uh, post-test from the pre-test is uh, because of the independent variable and not because of any other reasons. That is why we need to have the comparison group. That is why we need to have people being randomly assigned because if people are not randomly assigned to these groups and if you choose people, then of course there will be errors and we'll talk about these errors as well. And you need to have a pre-test and post-test as well. Uh, because uh, pretest is before you administer the treatment or, or, or the uh, condition and post-test is after that. We'll talk about uh, some of the designs. Some of the designs are quasi-experimental. Some of them are not truly experimental, but they are an, under, uh, under the uh, umbrella of experimental design. So uh, experimental control is about these three different things. I, this is just to repeat. The first one is about uh, the comparison and control group. So the uh, experimental group is all, all often known as the comparison group. So we need to be uh, very clear about these two and that they must be randomized that uh, assignment to these two groups must be random. And uh, often in the control group, the person is given a placebo. So say, for example, in our experimental group, we give uh, them uh, some uh, uh, content which has, uh, say, for example, uh, violent uh, content inside. And to the control group, I give a content, I give, I give, make them uh, go through some content which does not have a uh, violent uh, uh, elements there. So that is a kind of a placebo because 
both of them think that they have received a treatment because if to one group you do not show them anything and to the other group you show something then obviously there will be a lot of design errors and people who are not a part of an experiment they might give answers very differently so random assignment is very important because if you do not assign people randomly to the comparison and control groups there can be a selection bias or there can be a, a bias of uh, you know one group being uh, 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 very different from the other group and that will not be uh, 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 able to justify will not be able to justify as researchers that whatever changes are being observed is only because of the independent variable because as you will remember that we are doing an, this experiment or the experimental design is uh, practically to uh, uh, prove this uh, cause effect relationship that this causes the other <clears throat> this is not only about uh, correlation it's about causation so that is why we are doing that and that's why all this rigor is so very important and the pre test and post test is also very important because if you uh, do only the post test then that is not enough so the same person has to be given a question before uh, the treatment is being provided and once after the treatment has been provided so we have to be uh, uh, very clear about these three dimensions of experimental control these are the three very important pillars of experimental design if we are not able to do that then our experiment will not be a, a true experiment uh, so uh, i will talk about uh, one as i said I, i'll be talking about one very uh, important example and this is uh, from a paper in this communication research reports this is by uh, yun kasi uh, uh, and uh, billingsley what do they talk this is about the effect of taking a public speaking class on one's writing abilities so if you take a public speaking class does it impact your writing ability or not so this is a kind of a experimental research and how did they go about it uh, so i will just use this example to demonstrate some of the things that i just spoke about so what these people did were well, they, they spoke of these five hypotheses so i'll just uh, uh, zoom in the hypothesis so the first one is that individuals exposed to a public speaking class will have greater gains in their writing skills of writing context than those uh, not exposed to a public speaking class so the first hypothesis is that individuals who have done a public speaking class they will have greater gain in their writing skills so their writing skills will improve so that is one of the hypothesis uh, the second is individuals exposed to public speaking class will have greater gains in their writing skills of content development so it's it's uh, about the first is about writing content the second is about content development the third is about writing structure the fourth is about the use of source and evidence and the fifth is about the uh, control of syntax so these are very specific hypotheses that somebody who has been exposed to this kind of a class will uh, have a, uh, or or will perform better than somebody who has not been exposed to that public speaking class now as you can understand that this experiment requires a lot of creativity because uh, you cannot force someone to do a class or, or you cannot uh, ask someone not to do a class so what these ex researchers did i mean these uh, yun uh, uh, costanti and costantini uh, uh, and uh, billingsley what they did was they found out students uh, uh, some of whom who were doing this uh, uh, public speaking class and others who were doing some other class so as you can understand this was not random but still uh, uh, there were uh, many other things that they took care of so just to demonstrate how experiments are done so they had students write a 3 to 5 page paper at the start of the semester and the end of the semester so this is the pre test and the uh, post test so they were not asked questions or they were not you know uh, their temperatures were not taken or they were, their, their blood pressure was not checked etc etc of course this is about social science research so it has to be about uh, uh, the uh, the uh, dependent variables that you were talking about and dependent variables are the writing skills so they were given this 3 to 5 page paper at the start and at the end of the semester and there were people and there were experts who would grade these uh, writing based on certain very standardized measures so uh, what they did was that uh, they uh, measure, they would measure the writing skill at the beginning at the end of course the coders weren't said that this is beginning and this is end or whatever they, it, it was just very random so they were asked to measure that and then they wanted to see whether the public speaking class group uh, performed any better than the uh, other class they, they did a history class so this is not a true control like uh, group as as you would understand because uh, in the true control group it must be very very similar so i will talk about these examples when i talk about a 
non equivalent group but the idea is very simple the independent variable was the public speaking class so that that took care of it uh, itself because people who did that class were in one group the, 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 the students who didn't do that class were in another group and we gave them this test at the beginning at the end and then we uh, evaluated that and then we started to uh, or we wanted to find out whether there was uh, anything available and that's that this is how uh, uh, psychology research or behavioral sciences research work and there are more than 600 students and then uh, this is regarded as a very good uh, 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 research in this particular area so uh, the reason why i chose this is to suggest that there are so many experimental measures available the key is to be very creative about that there was no laboratory involved there people were not able uh, required to sit through or whatever it's just that they were identified and they were uh, uh, given these tests before and after the uh, semester class of course there are there are uh, threats to validity and all which will be answered as i go along uh so uh important to understand some of the notations i i'm now going to talk about some of the experimental designs uh, what, what 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 is a true experimental design what is a quasi experimental design and so on and so forth and before we start we must understand these uh, three or four terms very carefully so whenever we see an o it will be about an observation of a dependent variable and whenever we see an x it will be a treatment of the independent variable R is about a random assignment, and O's are numbered with subscripts from left to the right, and this is in uh, on the time order. So if it is a pre-test, it will be O1. If it is a post-test, it will be O2. And if you do a test after, or you do, if you do an observation after that, it will be O3. So uh, O is the observations that you are making, X is the treatment you are providing, and R is the random assignment. So I, whenever we see such uh, pictures, we must understand that what this means. In fact, I'll be showing you. Some of these pictures to uh, describe the experimental designs that I'm talking about. So very important to remember these things because later on, whenever you talk of experiments, you will be talking in terms of these notations. You will probably not even be writing about that. So just like music notations, this is about uh, notation of experimental design. So uh, there are uh, uh, situations where uh, classic design is not possible. I, I just explain what classic design means. Classic designs means where randomization you are able to do where uh, you are able to do the post test and the pre test and all those things so there are cases where it is not possible even in the case where uh, i spoke of this uh, wonderful paper which was published in this journal even there we could see that this is not a classic design because we were not able to randomize students into these two groups so there are cases when uh, this is not possible and that's where we have to do uh, these kind of uh, tests so uh, one of the uh, uh, pre experimental design tests is the one shot case study so uh, one shot case study is a design where uh, some manipulation of the independent variable occurs so what we do is that we wanted to uh, we want to find out uh, the effectiveness of political campaign on voting behavior so uh, some some person has uh, uh, taken part in this uh, political campaign or, or likes that political campaign or has been exposed to political campaign what uh, uh, how does he or she vote or it could be any kind of a thing so it's just a one shot case study the person is exposed to some uh, independent variable and we just do one post test because we don't do any pre test because that is not possible and also there is no control group there so only one group and uh, we we provide it with only one uh, treatment or we don't even provide but we can see that that there is a treatment which exists and we just do one post test and as you can understand there are lots of problems where we, because if we do this kind of a study we cannot tell with surety that there is a cause effect relation that people voted only because of this political campaign there could be other variables also so when we have to provide this uh, uh, cause effect relation where we are suggesting that the change in the dependent variable is happening happening only because of the uh, independent variable then we have to be very clear with the design but in case that's not possible these are the uh, uh, possibilities that exist the other possibility is the one group pre test post test so this is just an extension of the one i just showed you this is where i am just giving them the post test where uh, the, these people have been exposed to say for example a political campaign or they have been exposed to some social message uh, campaign or any kind of a thing uh, in in an extension of that the same group we are able to give them the pre test and the post test pre test means we give them the pre test before they went to the political rally and we give them a post test after they return from the political rally but again there are a lot of factors about time and all i'll talk about that uh, in a moment's time but uh, this is another type of experimental research where we are giving them 
uh, we are giving the same group, the pre-test and the post-test. So uh, if I have to show you in terms of notation, this is how it looks. So uh, if, if, you, if you remember, in the one uh, short case study, there is no pre-test. There is only an observation. So there is a condition, as you can understand, when, when I spoke of X, X means a condition, X means a treatment. And there is an observation. So there is no two groups, there is no other thing, there is no randomization, just the treatment and the observation. And in the one shot pre-test, post-test, there is an observation before the uh, treatment and there is an observation after the treatment. So I, I'm sure uh, this, this notation now makes some sense that uh, when we talk of uh, X, we are talking of the treatment and O means observation. So uh, these are the two uh, types of pre-experimental uh, designs, as I said, these are examples of pre-experiment designs. The one is the one shot case study, the other is the one shot pre-test, post-test. Now I'll talk about the quasi-experimental design. Quasi-experimental design is a time series uh, kind of a design. That There I'm measuring the dependent variable at various points of time before and after the manipulation of the independent variable. So say for example, I made you sit in front of some OTT content and before making you sit in front of that OTT content, I measure the different variable uh, before and after that, I do at uh, various levels of time. I might be doing it after one day, after one week, after 10 days or whatever. This is uh, done so as we can be clear about whether there is a degree of change over time. So as you can understand, this is a quasi-experimental. This is not a true experimental design because again, uh, problems of uh, randomness and uh, control, etc. they are not satisfied here or they are not uh, met here. So uh, this is a quasi-experimental design, that's why. Uh, and in the design uh, and in the U experiment, in the experiment of public speaking that I just showed you, uh, this one, and this uh, on public speaking class, there, as I, as I told you, this was a non-equivalent control group because the other group, I had no control over them. One of my group, which is a comparison group, they were the students who took the public speaking class. But over the other group, I had no uh, 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 control. They were the ones who would decide what, what class they would take. So I took a, a, a similar one where they took a history class. So basically, I was comparing public speaking classes with, the, with their history classes. So both of them are giving pre-test and post-test. All those things are there. But the, uh, the, the control group, uh, over the control group, we do not have any control. So if I have to express that, this is how it will look. In the time series, if you can say O1, O2, O3, these are the observations I made three times before the treatment was provided. X, as you can understand, is the treatment or the condition or the manipulation of the independent variable. And after that, over, over three different time periods, I, I, I take the observation again, O4, O5, and O6. So I'm doing it over a period of time, over three, three uh, times before the uh, uh, independent uh, uh, variable was manipulated and three times after that. In the non-equivalent, as you can see that in one of the groups, uh, this X condition is there. X condition in, in that case was about exposure to public speaking classes. So we do one uh, pre-test, one post-test, but the other one we have no control over. So it's they are not similar groups. We just take the observation before and after. And we'll try and see whether there are any differences in these two groups. So basically, I'm trying to uh, see whether the dependent variable changes in these two groups. Uh, the post-test only control group design, this includes a random test, uh, uh, so we can have only the post-test also. So there are cases when it is not possible for us to find out pre-test. Pre-test would mean that you identify those people and then you do a test, then you manipulate uh, the independent variable and then you do the test again, uh, which is the post-test. So there are cases where we will only be able to do only post-test, although uh, all other things will be satisfied. There will be comparison groups. Comparison group means experimental group. There will be control groups. There will be random assignments. But generally, we are not able to perform all the other uh, tests there. So that is what uh, we are saying is, is uh, different uh, for uh, uh, these quasi-experimental quasi tests. It's uh, about uh, how far uh, the logistics apply uh, or how far the logistics allow you to do it in the classical way. So as I said, in a quasi-experimental way, uh, design, we are not able to perform these things. So this is as good as uh, as close you, uh, you can get to the classic experimental design. Uh, then there is uh, one of the most, uh, uh, as I said, rigorous designs, which is known as the Solomon four group design. So this is a true uh, uh, experimental design and it, it goes even beyond the uh, classic uh, design. So it has uh, 
two extra control groups. I mean, they have one extra control group and one comparison group, random assignment, and they have two pretests and four uh, post tests. So this is to take care of all that, that I'm, I'm going to talk about a lot of problems. So if I have a Solomon four group test, then a lot of the problems of validity that I'll just talk about in a moment's time, they will be taken care of. So if uh, I'm just, I'll, I'll talk about 12 problems of, of validity in, in a moment's time. So if I have to explain that in terms of notation, this is how it looks. So the pretest post test means there is an observation and it is randomized. I, I have a treatment and I do uh, uh, an observation before and after. And since there is a control group, so I have uh, an observation before and after where there is no treatment. So if you if I have to just again, you know, uh, compare it with the clinical example I gave you. So this the, the first group would have been given a vaccine and I see whether there are any changes. The second group is not given the vaccine and whether we see whether there are any changes or not. So this is the uh, pretest. In the post-test only control group, we only do the post-test. As you can see, there is no observation before giving the vaccine. You know, there is no uh, uh, thing giving uh, before giving them the, uh, uh, or before manipulating the independent variable for them. And in the Solomon four group design, as you can see that we have this one uh, uh, group where we are just having the post-test. In the other group, we are having, uh, there is no treatment. So this is just a control group. We are having the pre-test and the post-test. This is the classical kind of a thing that we do where we have a pretest, we have a post test, and it is random as well. And in another uh, group, we just have the post test. So we have uh, four post tests, we are having uh, two control groups, and we are having two pretests. So that is the Solomon four group design. Why do you have to do all that? I will just explain in a moment's time why such a rigorous method is required. This is to take care of all the possibilities. Uh, uh, of, of validity that that might threaten the uh, all the problems of uh, validity that might threaten my uh, conclusion. So that's why we have this Solomon four group design. So uh, basically, uh, we know about validity. Validity means the uh, ability to eliminate alternative explanations of the dependent variable. So if I am suggesting that this is happening only because of the treatment that uh, that have been given, then I have to uh, remove all the other possibilities. So variables other than the treatment are threats to internal validity. So as I said that if my experiment is about public speaking uh, leading to uh, better writing, then all the other explanations must be taken care of. Because if other explanations exist, then I cannot show that cause effect relation. So uh, now in the next few slides, I'm going to talk about what are the validity threats in, 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 in a very, uh, in a very short uh, time. So, uh, there are six time progression effects. First of all is, uh, uh, so I'm going to talk about these six uh, threats to validity as far as time is concerned. As, and, and what is validity test? That what I'm trying to measure is, is uh, not uh, the true measure that I'm getting. So uh, history means uh, uh, that there are events that happen during the experiment that is outside the uh, study. So it, it, it might happen, uh, you know, that there could be some uh, things happening whenever I'm doing a test or a pretest or a post test. Obviously, I'm doing it over a period of time. So there might be other things that might come up. Um, uh, probably India is winning or losing or, or some other thing that I have no control over, but it may affect the outcome of the study. So people might uh, be, be happy only because uh, maybe the Indian cricket team is winning. That is not a part of my experiment and I have no control over that. But that, that happens in the outside world. So these things might uh, take place. And that is why, as I said, we have the, that uh, four uh, group design. Instrumentation, again, that is a problem which I spoke of when I spoke about, uh, or when I did a presentation on uh, questionnaire design. That, say for example, I'm doing a pretest, and then from the example or the answers, I think that, okay, if I uh, add another question or I remove another question, then it will be better. So I am changing the instrument. I'm changing the survey instrument from the pretest to the post test. And if I do that, then of course my validity will be under question. Uh, maturation is, as I said, a naturally occurring process in experiments. So all my participants over a period of time, they will be developing mentally, physically, emotionally, otherwise. So whatever they answered, maybe a month back, they will be knowing a lot better now. So of course, as you can understand that before, uh, uh, online classes, nobody would even uh, tell you what was Zoom. Zoom would mean, you know, somebody who would move very fast. Zooming would mean uh, fast or, or we didn't uh, even have a Google Meet then. And But right now, a lot more people are uh, 
experts with uh, online technology. So that is a, a special uh, occurrence, but it might occur uh, very naturally also. So I must make my design uh, uh, take care of all these things. Mortality, unlike its literal meaning, is not about people uh, uh, not living. It's about the fact that many people who will start the experiment, they will not finish. And unlike uh, our good uh, Hindi serials, we cannot uh, uh, change them just just through some uh, plastic surgery or whatever. Because if my participants change uh, uh, during the process, uh, or if they're not available, then of course I will not be able to get results out of that. Because uh, the effect on the same person is, is being seen. So this is again a problem of validity. Statistical regression would happen when my sample includes people who are outliers. People who are extreme uh, of the dependent variable, so that that problem is there. And again, there is a problem of the testing itself, the testing effect itself, because the same person has been given the pretest, and uh, consciously or subconsciously, he or she might be sensitized to what is the right answer. So when I give him or her the uh, post-test again, then they would know what is the right answer, and they would try and. Uh, take care of uh, the answer. So if you can understand, so uh, all these things that we were doing here, that in certain cases we were having control group, in certain cases we were having just the post test, in certain cases we're having, uh, 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 you know, uh, no, only, only the control group. So all these things are to ensure that these things are taken care of. Uh, there are six more uh, problems there, uh, as, as I said. One is the uh, compensation behavior, because if the as I said, there are two groups. One is the experimental group and the other is the control group. And oftentimes we say that uh, that is a comparison group. So if, if one group sees that the experimental group is getting uh, special treatment, then uh, they might respond differently or they might even get angry. Again, there's a problem with, with knowledge. So if you tell them, if you tell people that you are being tested for something, then uh, uh, they may provide answers which they think that the researchers want. So this is again a thin line to walk because uh, if you don't tell them, then the, there's a, uh, there's a problem uh, with with uh, certain kinds of uh, 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 regulations and so on and so forth. But if I tell them that this is why we are doing the research, then they might give answers which they think are desirable. So that again is a problem, and uh, it's also related to something which is known as the Hawthorne effect. And what is Hawthorne effect? It, it means that whenever individuals know they are being watched in the workplace their productivity goes up. So if, if your boss is there or if, if uh, uh, your, your uh, parents are there and if you're working in front of them, probably uh, it, it goes up. So it depends on the situation. But again, the Hawthorne effect is if you're watched. So when you're observing people, uh, they might think that, okay, I'm being observed. So they might be at their best possible behavior and they might not be giving you the true answers that you want. And as I said, we are, we are taking care of all these problems through our experimental research designs. And also, you know, researcher attributes. So some, some people, so if you're doing on some gender issues and if the researcher is a male, then, you know, you might not get uh, all the honest answers or, or, or the other way also. So there are uh, problems. The selection uh, thread, I just uh, told you that uh, uh, we are when we are not able to randomly assign participants into the uh, experimental group or the co control group. And in, in our term, as I said, we are also often using experiment as comparison group also. So in the uh, public speaking uh, experiment that I just showed you, we were unable to uh, provide them randomly. So that selection bias can cause a problem. And the other problem, and as, as you can understand that there are so many layers to it and it, it, it gets so sophisticated as you uh, go in, into it. So one is that... Uh, uh, it's known as a treatment diffusion or, or the contamination. So participant in the treatment group will tell the control group about the treatment and then the answer. So uh, as I told you, the control group is required for certain reasons so that we uh, take care of all the other possibilities. So because the control group is uh, present, uh, uh, um, the control group has access to information about the uh, 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 experimental group, they might uh, uh, behave differently. So uh, this is uh, uh, the presentation uh, for today. And uh, I'm sure that uh, this gives us uh, uh, a very uh, clear idea about what experimental research is and uh, how to go about it. Uh, thank you so much.